Elon Musk just declared that Starship is the most powerful flying object ever created. With six Raptors for Starship and 33 for Super Heavy, the current thrust of Starship is already more than twice that of Saturn V. However, in reality, Starship can be even more powerful than that. With future upgrades, Elon Musk mentioned it would have three times the thrust. And coincidentally, in a recent report by SpaceX, they inadvertently revealed details about adding new engines for Starship and Super Heavy. Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech how many more Raptor engines SpaceX will add to Starship. Is this the final rocket variant that SpaceX intends to use long-term for all their space exploration missions? According to the new details that SpaceX disclosed in the proposed environmental review for the FAA, the upgraded version of Starship will include 35 Raptor engines for the Super Heavy booster and 9 engines for the upper stage. Focusing on the 9 Raptor engines on the Starship upper stage, we can infer that this version is likely Starship V3. This is based on an image Elon shared in April, which shows that only the second stage of Starship V3 has nine Raptor engines. From this, we can conclude that the final version of the rocket that SpaceX will develop is Starship V3, with a super heavy booster equipped with 35 Raptor engines, a point that many space enthusiasts have been curious about since SpaceX revealed the new Starship variants. In the past, SpaceX has considered various numbers of engines for the super heavy booster for larger versions of Starship. Back in 2019, SpaceX proposed that the Starship rocket would have a super heavy booster with 31 Raptor engines, later increasing to 35, then 37, and even up to 41 engines at one point. However, due to the design of Raptor's engine and the arrangement needed to properly distribute thrust for the Super Heavy's operation, SpaceX and Elon Musk eventually decided on 33 engines, with a maximum of 35 for booster. With 35 engines and 10,000 tons of thrust, the Super Heavy V3 will use Raptor 3 engines, each providing more than 280 tons of thrust. This specification aligns perfectly with all the slides about the rocket variants and engine types we've studied before. To compare, the thrust of Super Heavy V3 alone is three times that of the legendary Saturn V. The height of Super Heavy by itself is 80.2 meters or 263 feet equivalent to a 30-story building and 60 feet taller than the Statue of Liberty. It is indeed the largest rocket booster in the world. Having said that, we must also not overlook the second stage, sitting atop Super Heavy, which is a spacecraft playing a crucial role in achieving the dream of breaking through Earth's sky. An optimal nine-engine Starship tank would be stretched about 25% to store an additional 300 tons of cryogenic liquid oxygen and methane, LOX-LCH4, that upgraded Starship would have a liftoff mass close to 1,600 tons and stand about 70 meters tall, 40% taller than current ships. At stage separation close to vacuum, a stretched Starship with three sea-level optimized Raptors and six vacuum-optimized Raptors should produce at least 2,700 tons of thrust, and possibly more depending on engine performance. Regardless of its thrust, dimensions, or weight, what matters most is how a stretched nine-engine Starship would impact that overall rocket's launch performance. If unofficial modelers are to be believed, the results are significant. Compared to a normal Starship with a six-engine upper stage and 33-engine booster, the stretch ship could theoretically boost the amount of payload the rocket can launch to low Earth orbit from about 150 tons to over 200 tons or more. That's almost a 50% improvement. If those estimates are accurate, upgrading Starship by adding nine Raptor engines and enlarging its fuel tank is the obvious choice. While this might delay development and increase the cost of each nine-engine ship, the potential 50% boost in payload capacity would greatly enhance the efficiency of Starship's missions to the Moon and Mars, which needs several refueling stops on the way. All these advantages demonstrate that a larger and longer version of Starship, which SpaceX aims to build, is an obvious reality as the company strives for new developments to achieve optimal results in its work. This is something that any company in any industry would want to learn from. This is why we see SpaceX repeatedly conducting tests that might end in explosions. Ultimately, these are not failures, but successes and victories over their own challenges, a rocket manufacturing approach vastly different from traditional companies. Similar to the number of engines on Starship, SpaceX has chosen its own unique path. Instead of opting for larger rocket engines, they have decided to install a greater number of smaller engines. When it comes to reusable rockets, there's a very specific reason to have smaller rocket motors, and it's quite surprising. Getting less thrust from rocket motors is incredibly difficult. Rocket motors cannot operate below a certain minimum amount of thrust. If you try to cut the thrust too much, they'll suddenly cut out altogether. 
Consider Starship, which weighs about 100 tons but requires 1,200 tons of propellant, liquid methane, and liquid oxygen for launch. During liftoff, the rockets must accelerate 1,300 tons to high speeds. However, during reentry, almost all of that fuel is gone, leaving only a few tons of propellant, reducing the overall weight to about a tenth of what it was at launch. Imagine, you have one giant motor capable of running between 20% and 100% thrust. But below 20%, it stalls. If it has enough thrust to launch 1,300 tons, the least thrust it can provide during landing is 20% of that, or 260 tons. This much thrust would cause the rocket to launch back upwards instead of allowing a gentle landing. Now, consider having four rocket motors, each capable of providing a quarter of the 1,300 tons of thrust required for launch, 425 tons each. During landing, instead of throttling each motor down to 10% power, you can shut off three motors and run the last one at a comfortable 40% thrust, allowing for a controlled descent. Even with the Falcon 9's nine Merlin engines, operating just one at a minimum thrust makes hovering impossible. Instead, it has to perform a suicide burn or hover slam landing, reigniting the engine at the last possible moment to slow down rapidly and cut the engine precisely as it reaches zero altitude and speed. A terrifying maneuver requiring perfect timing. The Raptor engine can throttle down to a lower thrust than the Merlin, but landing remains a technological nightmare. Having multiple motors provides redundancy. If one fails, the others can still provide enough thrust for a safe landing. For Starship, additional complications arise when landing on Mars. 38% of Earth's gravity, or the Moon, 16% of Earth's gravity, requiring even lower thrust levels. SpaceX plans to mass produce thousands of Starships and hundreds of super heavy boosters, requiring tens of thousands of Raptor engines, an unprecedented quantity for rocket motors. 3D printing techniques allow for cost-effective mass production, and having a large number of smaller motors simplifies the manufacturing process compared to fewer, larger motors. So, why hasn't this been done before? To be honest, this was already done long ago by the Soviet Union when they built the N1 rocket with 30 engines. But as Pablo de Leon, the chair of the Department of Space Studies at the University of North Dakota, puts it, it's a nightmare for the plumbers, reminiscent of the Soviet Union's 30-engine N1 moon rocket, which was intended to carry cosmonauts to the moon, but it's best remembered for blowing up spectacularly in the 1969 test flight, causing the largest explosion in space history. The Soviet N-1 erupted just seconds after liftoff, collapsing back to the ground and destroying the launch pad. In contrast, SpaceX has successfully launched four times, with three of those launches seeing all 33 engines doing well on the flight. This track record gives confidence that even with an increase to 35 engines, SpaceX is likely to maintain its success. Now the company is continuing to build new starships at a furious pace, reminiscent of NASA's Apollo era when 13 Saturn V's were flown from 1967 to 1973, nine of which carried crews to the moon in just a four-year window. I think they have a long factory full of multiple duplicates of these systems, says Logsdon. It's not like they lost something that's irreplaceable. Musk has delivered on his promises for Starship, although the timeline may have been delayed. The company has staked its future, and NASA has staked its Artemis moon program on the promise that the mammoth rocket will indeed fly and fly well. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.